Uh, let's go to Axios reporter Caitlin Owens, Democratic strategist Isaac Wright, and the former chief of staff to Senator Mike Lee, uh, Boyd Matheson. Um, let me get your read on this, Boyd, and the, the back and forth on trade and the back and forth on this president, who will no doubt talk about progress of the trade front, clearly progress on the economic front, even progress on the poll front, where a majority of Americans give him credit for the, the economy they, uh, that seven out of ten of them say is, is, is doing pretty well. What do you think? Yeah, and I think that's where the where he really needs to stay in terms of messaging today. He doesn't need to be talking about John McCain. He doesn't need to be talking about Beto O'Rourke or Elizabeth Warren. Why does he Warren. do that? It just seems so <laughs> innately stupid. Why does he it, do it, that? <laughs> it, you know, it, it, part of it's a discipline factor. Part of it is he's used it uh, as a diversionary tactic in other settings. But the thing you have to remember is that most White Houses run out of energy before they run out of opportunity. And this is one of those days, as you said, Neil, he should be spiking the ball saying, look, 71 percent of Americans feel that the economy is working and moving forward uh, and really driving that message home and saying, hey, this is what winning feels like, as opposed to being distracted and uh, really losing message uh, yeah. in a host of things that just don't matter to the economy or the American people. And he trips on that line, Caitlin, by saying something there. I mean, it, it, it's not a right or left thing to say you don't speak ill of the dead, you don't speak that's ill right. of an American hero. I mean, you guys didn't get along. That's very clear. I get it. Right. I get that there's still, you know, heated resentment, you know, all this time later. But you got to move on. You're the leader of the free world. You've got a good message to sell if you're selling the economy and promise on trade. And then you do that. You'd think so, Neil, but uh, President Trump holds grudges, um, and it doesn't seem to matter who it is, whether they're dead or alive, a respected war hero or not. Um, you know, John McCain both criticized Trump pretty openly, um, very yeah. openly at times, and also defeated one of his signature legislative efforts through voting no on the Health Care Act. Um, so, uh, you know, it seems that. Uh, it doesn't. The circumstances around who it is doesn't matter, but Trump's ire will continue. It, it is uh, what it continues. is. I, I just get a little nervous when he goes through the Fox anchor lineup, but that's a separate issue. <laughs> Isaac, I do want to get your take, though, on where this is going. The president will have a compelling case to make that with the markets doing what they're doing, with the economy doing what it's doing, uh, many are saying it's a, it, 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 it's, a, it's a pretty good likelihood that he'll have this still going with him. Uh, in November 2020. Now, that's a leap because I know things can change fast. But if he did, if he does, then what? Well, I think today could be a big barometer for that, right? A lot of President Trump, uh, uh, President Trump's support historically has come out of rural America. And the meeting today with the President of Brazil amidst uh, uh, questions of international trade and specifically the agricultural trade policy with Brazil is a huge thing, right? Uh, the, the Trump trade tariffs, the Trump trade war was, was aimed at the manufacturing sector, but the unintended casualty in that was the American farmer and rancher, right? right? Uh, uh, Last year, the at the end of last year, front the, and something near and dear to a lot of those farmers. Yeah. Absolutely. At the end of last year, uh, American farm income was down 50 percent. The soybean prices were down 20 percent. Uh, sorghum prices had tumbled. If you were an alfalfa producer, alfalfa producers were looking at losing $377 million nationally. At the same time, at the end of the year, Brazil was celebrating. They were celebrating that for the first time their ag exports had broken the $100 billion mark, right? They have actually been a beneficiary of the sure. Trump trade war. Uh, there is the demand from China for soybean has driven, up, uh, has driven up bean prices in Brazil. It's driven up demand for Brazilian beef. So what is Donald Trump going to do today in terms of ag trade policy to see that some of the American wealth that he has shifted to Brazil's agricultural industry can be felt at home? You know, it's interesting, Boyd, when, when they refer to, you know, Bolsonaro as the sort of the Trump of the, the, the tropics, that he's, he's much the same populist, renegade, conservative leader. The, the, the fact of the matter is, though, China is Brazil's largest commercial trading partner, so he has to walk a fine line, you know, ex accepting the president's tough stance with China, but not going so far as to alienate China, right? Yeah, that's right. It's a, it's a really tricky balance, which is why uh, most presidents struggle uh, with the international stuff. It's easy, it's easy to have the populist message at home. It's hard to uh, really thread the needle on that when you're negotiating right. international mm -hmm. deals. And so I think that's going to ultimately be the test. Uh, and, I, and I agree that it's, it is going to be about those hardworking farmers across the country. If they, don't start, if they don't start feeling it, then I think those numbers start to swing a little bit. Uh, but again, populist message is easy, but it's, it's much harder to lead and much harder to govern. Uh, and you can look at Venezuela as the uh, as the case study there. You know, anything can happen at a joint press, or Caitlin, and I, I know you've mm -hmm. been to these sort of events where 
uh, they get off message, and in this case, the president led by getting off message. Uh, and over the weekend, you know, tweeting about everything from Sunday Night Live to anchors he likes right. or doesn't like, and right. uh, what everything's about John McCain. Or are they, and and I'm wondering if that becomes the predominant theme, largely because of what the president says, and it, it steals his thunder, his own thunder. That could easily happen today, Neil. I mean, I think it's an understatement to say we never know what is going to happen at a Trump press conference. Um, and this one today with Bolsonaro, I mean, he has, the, the Brazilian president has said some pretty inflammatory things. And if Trump's asked his opinion on some of those different comments, um, let alone just the stuff that Trump's been tweeting about or talking about, like John McCain recently, right. um, I mean, this could go off the rails really easily. But, you know, I think in the end, our Democrats really mostly worried about the economy and that if people vote on their pocketbook and their economic security is the feeling right now that that is a big problem. The president's personal conduct notwithstanding or his musings about John McCain or anyone else, um, in that regard, they're, 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 they're up against a formidable competitor, right? I think that's actually Democrats' great strength will be that people vote with their pocketbook and vote for the economy or not. If you look at the first 25 months of President Trump's administration, it has slowed down from the last 25 months of President Obama's administration in terms of job growth. We're looking at the Trump budget that's proposed a trillion dollar cut to Medicare and Medicaid. Well, not uh, in terms of record employment levels for social. every key demographic. Traditionally, some of those key demographic grab, uh, you know, areas, Which and, been, and not improving retail sales, improving GT, GDP. I'm not here to do a left or right thing on that, but that is something that is going his way. You argue that the, 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 the performance slow itself down is will not do it? We've not I had think 25, 25 months, months of, of economic down. slowdown is, is actually going to be in Democrats' favor. Just like I think the trade policies we talked about with the so American farmers. So record low Farmer unemployment rates, rates record, low, uh, record high performance, corporate hiring, all of that is not going to move the needle for him because of this other stuff or precisely because it's not as good as the administration is claiming it is? Because it's not as good as the administration okay. before. All right, we'll see. All right, guys, I want to thank you all for a balance arguing back and forth on all of that, hating, waiting to hear from the President of the United States and how he will respond.